Hi, I'm so glad you're here. This is Jennifer McGuire, and today I have my 2023 crafty gift guide. I had intended to share this video a couple weeks ago, but I got sick, my son got sick, my daughter got sick, and you know, time just gets away from you. However, I thought it's still fun to share, and it's something that you can refer back to throughout the year whenever you're looking for a good tool or product that is tried and true. So basically the products I'm sharing today are things that I found particularly helpful in my crafting throughout the year. I will say I've done this video the past couple of years and those products still hold true also. So if you're looking for more ideas, be sure to check out my 2022 list, which I have uh, linked below in my description. Now this video is a longer video because I really wanted to share a lot of information. If you are looking for more information on a particular product, there are a few things I wanted to point out. All you need to do is open the description below this video. It'll look something like what you see on the screen here. Now here we have links to the different products I talk about, but better yet, I recommend going to the link where it says for a visual list go to. Click that link and something like this will open up. Now here are all the different things that I'll be talking about today. What you do is click one of the buttons underneath it and that will take you to a shop where you can read more about the product. But even better, you see those red little YouTube buttons? If you click one of those under a particular product, it'll take you to a video that I've done in the past that shows like a more in-depth use of that particular product so you can learn more about it. I spend a lot of time pulling this together in hopes that it's just a nice resource for you. Even if you're not shopping, totally understand, you can find more information on how to use different products creatively by checking out this visual supply list. I also wanted to mention there are a lot of excellent products out there. These are just things that stood out to me as I was thinking of really useful tools that I've used this year. And again, you can also check out my list from last year. A lot of great products on that too. I do have my favorite crafty things coming out very soon, so stay tuned for that. This is more of kind of a general list that doesn't go into specific types of stamps, dies, and so on. I also think it's important to mention that I included these products because I wanted to. I don't work for any of these companies and I purchased most of these products. I have information about all of that below if you're interested. Okay, let's dive in because I've got a lot to share. First, we have the Misty Stamping Tool. Now, this is not new. I have been using a Misty Stamping Tool for many years. I do feel it is a game changer if you are a stamper and something that I recommend any stamper try to invest in. The reason I'm including it again this year is I've purchased some new ones because they now have the black Misty available, you see on the left, and the teal Misty on the right. I actually keep a couple Misties on hand just because I uh, do this for a living. Really, you only need one of them. And I like this original size. By the way, the packaging that this comes wrapped in, save that. You can cut it up and use it to add dimension on your cards. That's what I was doing there. So I just bought these two Misties, and I thought I'd show you how I set them up and use them since there are some new tools that have come out. I take the mouse pad and scrap paper out and I set that aside. The Misties do come with this bar magnet that I will wrap tape on a little bit later, but I'm setting them aside right now. Now in my Misty stamping tool, I prefer to use one of two different things. I like to use a Brutus Monroe stick and stamp mat. This has a sticky surface and it'll hold your cardstock in place. You could use it with the mouse pad underneath it, or you could use it just as the sticky mat in there when you're stamping with a cling stamp. The other tool that I like to use in a Misty, just another option, is the Waffle Flower Grip Mat. That's a newer product that's come out this year and I'm gonna show you it uh, several times throughout this video. The grip mat is available in many different sizes, but I like the six and a half by eight and a half inch grip mat. It's a nice size and it fits perfectly into the Misty. When you use this, you do not need a mouse pad because it's just the right thickness. This is made from the same material that our clear stamps are made from. So you know that it has a little bit of natural stick to it. Now what I like to do is take the grid acetate piece. This is just an acetate piece with a green grid on it that comes with the grip mat. And I line that up in the center of my Misty, lining up those green grid lines with the blue grid lines in the Misty. I'm taping that in place with those grids lined up and then putting my grip mat on top, making sure it's in the corner of the stamping tool. 
I then press down and our grip mat will grab a hold of that acetate piece. Now you only have to do that once and I just leave it here. So what happens is I have that grid stuck to the back of my grip mat, but there still is a little sticky exposed on all four sides right around the edge there. So I can put it in my misty, and it'll stick there. Or I can take it out from there and stick it onto my glass work surface when I want to do stenciling. You'll see all this demonstrated throughout this video. And I'll talk more about the glass work surface later on. So you can see how this can be easily moved between the two. So those are two different ways you can set up your MISTI stamping tool. You see me do both in my videos because both work great. Now there is still the magnet that you can use, but honestly with the sticky mat, you don't need to rely on the magnet as much anymore because the stickiness will hold your paper in place. I will say one of the benefits of the Brutus Monroe stick and stamp mat is that it's thin. So you can use that to hold your paper in place whenever you're using a thicker cling stamp. And then when you want to use a thinner clear stamp, you just put the mouse pad underneath it. With the waffle flower grip mat, that doesn't work as well with cling because it's thicker. So I like to have both options on hand. I will show you other uses of the grip mat throughout this video, but keep in mind you can do the same techniques with the Brutus Monroe stick and stamp mat. They're both great products. In addition to being helpful inside of a stamping tool, sticky mats are great outside of a stamping tool to use with stencils. And when I do stenciling on a sticky mat, I also like to use blank stencil sheets. These come in 12 by 12 sheets, it's stencil material, and I just cut them to different lengths and sizes. These are handy for me to use over and over again to mask off different areas of a stencil. So let me demonstrate here using the waffle flower grip mat and a Concord and Knight stencil. I'm putting my cardstock onto that grip mat, then the stencil on top. And you can see how the stencil grips onto the grip mat and it is holding there, it won't move. Then I use these blank stencil material pieces that I cut to mask off different areas so that I can do multiple colors over a stencil. So you can see I could do that whole row of rainbows one color, then I can move the mask and do another row a different color. And because I have that sticky surface, it's holding my paper, the stencil, and these little stencil masks in place as I do my inking. And remember, I keep these stencil sheet pieces to use over and over again. I just clean them with rubbing alcohol. So these are tools that you use over and over. Now, another thing that I have on hand is a bunch of these stencil pieces that I've die cut various circles from. That way I can do selective inking. Let me show you that here. Say you have a stencil and you want to do different areas, different colors. You could use those mask strips that I've cut, but sometimes a circle is better. So I have this circle mask I created and I can just put it over a stencil, ink over that area, then move to the next and ink over that. This is really helpful when the different areas of the stencil are close together, so you can make sure you easily mask it off to do different colors. By the way, this material is pretty tricky to die cut through, so here's what I do. I have my cutting plate, then I put a piece of scrap cardstock, then I put the stencil sheet material on top, and then the die, and I'll run that through. That extra piece of cardstock behind the stencil material helps to push that die cutting edge through, and you can get a nice cut that way. So I included the blank stencil sheets on my crafty gift guide because they're great for stenciling, but then you can also make your own stencils with them. Okay, let's move on to the next item on my crafty gift guide, and that is a glass work surface. For as long as I can remember, I've worked on some sort of glass work surface. I zoomed out on my camera, and this is what you see in my videos. It has the measurements along the side, it has the center lines for the center point there, and quarter inch grid lines. Now, I work on black in videos because things show up better on the black. However, underneath it, if you look around the edge, I have a white glass board. And that's what sometimes I'll work on when I'm not filming. Now, although I choose to use the white and the black versions, there are other colors available and even some glass mats that have floral borders to them that are really pretty. Now, these are also magnetic. So there are these little magnets that come with it or you can get them separately and they can be used to hold your cardstock in place. Now, I don't usually use these magnets, but I do like that this is an option with these magnetic glass boards. The reason I like working on glass is it's super easy to clean up. Keep in mind, these mats are also available in lots of different sizes. 
I have bought different sizes for different areas of my craft rooms over the years. I just really think that it's a game changer to work on glass. Next up on my crafty gift guide list is something that I didn't think I need until I used them. Spellbinders has these nine inch shears that cut like butter. I find myself reaching for these over any other scissors in my craft room these days. They've become kind of my best friend. Uh, what I like about them is they cut very smooth. They also uh, have a nonstick coating, so I find they don't get all mucky. And they're just really high quality. They're nice and heavy and something that I know will last me a while. And by the way, if you've ever tried to cut through foil with other scissors, you know, sometimes that's tricky, but this will just slide through cutting a piece of foil. I absolutely love them. Now, speaking of cutting, I have three different trimmers on my crafty gift guide list, not meaning that you need three trimmers, but that there are three excellent trimmers available based on your needs. I use all three of these and find them all great in different ways. Now, the one that I've used the most because I've had it the longest is the Tim Holtz Guillotine Comfort Paper Trimmer. I actually just bought a new one. It's a little workhorse, lasts forever, but I thought it was time to replace mine. Now, this is available in a mini version, this size, and then a bigger one. I like this middle size. I like that there's a ledge at the bottom of the trimmer and at the top that you can put your paper on to keep it straight. I find that I'm able to cut very thin strips of cardstock with this, and that blade cuts through like butter. I also like that there are grid lines that are a quarter inch apart, so you can easily do measurements by just using that grid line on the background. There are also marks for popular sizes like A2 cards and such. So here's my older one. I have been using this in videos for years. I actually broke that plastic piece, so I went ahead and replaced it. But I'm telling you, this is a great tool, high quality, and I really like how straight it cuts. Now recently, Tim has come out with two other trimmers that are awesome, and they're both made by Tonic, who makes great quality products. Now this is the first one. This one was the answer to my, my crafty dreams. This is the Tonic Rotary Media Trimmer with Tim Holtz. This cuts wonderfully. It's a big mama trimmer, high quality, and it has a rolling blade on there. Now I did a complete video with all of the things about this trimmer, which I'll link to below. But this is one that you could use for just about everything because you have the swing out arm at the top and the bottom so you can measure bigger pieces. You have the grid lines in the background that also help to measure. And then the rotary blade moves very smoothly. It doesn't take a whole lot of effort to cut through paper and you can actually cut through a couple sheets if you wanted to. Now the key is to put your fingers on the side of the rotary blade, which kind of pushes it in. It doesn't take much pressure at all. And then you can just roll back and forth. You're able to cut very thin strips of cardstock with this and get a straight line every time. This is the trimmer I reach for when I'm crafting. I don't always show it in videos because you can see it doesn't fit very well in the screen because I have a small screen area. So you see me using the other one. But when I go to cut a bunch of cardstock, this is definitely the trimmer that I reach for. I will say I have over the years tried many rotary trimmers, invested in a lot of them. Some of them are very expensive. And this is the one that I felt worked best for me because it was designed by a crafter. This brings us to the third trimmer option, again from Tonic and Tim Holtz, and this is the pre Precision Trimmer. It's the newest of the three. I haven't shown it in videos yet because I'm still getting to know it, but after trying it out, I'm very impressed with how it cuts. It's just a different option. This has a blade that slides along that track, and you can see the track naturally kind of stays lifted from the board, so you can slide your paper uh, um, underneath it very easily. And then you just press it down to hold your paper in place as you cut. You can also remove this blade and place in a scoring blade. So you can score with this also. It has the arms that swing out to measure longer pieces. And you can again put your paper at the top ledge or the bottom ledge. You can easily see the little groove where the blade runs so you can know where your paper will cut. Now this is the type of trimmer that a lot of people who've crafted for a long time would be familiar with where you have that arm and the blade runs up and down through it. But there is another reason I like this trimmer and that is because you really can control where you start and stop your cutting. 
For example, these are the free ink swatch downloads I have over on my blog, and on it it tells you how to go about cutting. When you cut them, you start at that little X and then you cut down. That would be harder to do with one of the other trimmers. You could use a craft knife and straight edge if you wanted, but with this trimmer you can drop the blade down and start cutting anywhere, and it gives you more control. So not only is it helpful when cutting these little ink swatches apart, it's helpful if maybe you want to do like a partial die cut technique, which I've done many times, that sh you want to cut up to a certain point and then stop. This trimmer gives you that control. Here's another thing. Say you want to cut a slit in this cardstock from that one point to the next point. You can put that into this trimmer and drop your blade on the first X press it down and then lift it at the next X and you can have a slit in your cardstock, which is often helpful in interactive card designs and more. So all three of these trimmers, I highly recommend. I've tried many, many over the years. You just need to think about which one offers the perks or benefits you would use most. All right, this brings us to die cut machines. Now I'll tell you, there are many die cut machines out there and I've tried them all also. If you're looking for an electric die cut machine, I highly recommend the Anna Griffith Empress die cut machine. This was actually on my crafty gift guide last year, but it's worth putting it on again this year. When I do crafting, this is usually what I reach for because I do a lot of die cutting. However, I don't always show it in a video because I have it built into my drawer next to me and it's kind of hard to pull up on the screen. For basic die cutting, you just need these three plates. There are two clear cutting plates, and then there is a magnet mat. Now the magnetic mat is thick, so it doesn't warp. And I've never had any issues of warping with any of these plates, which is one of the best things about it. And because that magnetic mat is thick, it holds up over time. And you can cut in two different ways. You can cut into the magnetic mat or cut into a clear cutting plate. Both works fine, and I actually switch between the two all the time. So here I've put cardstock onto the magnetic mat and then my die on top. And you can see that that magnet's strong enough that it holds that die in place and I don't need tape. There you can see how thick that mat is. I put one cutting plate below the mat and then one cutting plate on top of the die. And I'll run that through my die cut machine. You can put these plates through in either direction, sideways or straight on as I'm doing here. And this will cut beautifully. And of course, the advantage of the electric machine is it goes through on its own and I don't have to crank anything. Now this is, again, one way you can cut where I just cut into that magnetic mat. If you do that, over time, you'll have to replace that magnetic mat, but that's okay, it lasts a very long time. I find that I can use one of these for several months and I do a lot of die cutting. Now the other way you can cut, really is a personal preference, and again, I switch between the two, is to tape your die onto your cardstock and then flip that over and put it on the magnetic mat and then put a clear cutting plate on top. This will cause you to cut into the clear plate, which means you'll have to replace that over time. But again, I find that these hold up and don't warp, so I can keep using them. You can see that clear plate has gotten a lot of love. I think this is a good place to also remind everyone that no matter what kind of die cut machine you have, plates are meant to be replaced over time. They're not supposed to be lifelong tools like the die cut machine. Plates should have to be replaced eventually. It's just that some last longer, and I do have a video showing how to make them last longer and remove any warping that you may get. But again, I've never had warping with these plates. Now, if you do decide to cut into the magnetic mat, the magnetic mat may flatten a little bit. You see how the sides are curved there? It's just flattened uh, over time, but that's okay. If it starts to flatten like this and not cut my paper all the way, I just add in the metal shim that comes with the machine. And I put that behind the magnetic mat, and then it gives me more use out of that before I have to replace it. So the plates and the magnetic mats are sold separately. You can put these in either direction. There are many different size options of plates. There are uh, plates that are twice the size. There are plates half the size. Lots of different options available. So this is the workhorse machine that I have been using um, for electric die cutting for several years now, and I can't recommend it enough. Oh, and also you can use some embossing folders with these. You just need to follow the instructions that come with it. And I do have a more complete video on this tool that I will link to below. 
Now, if you're looking for a manual die cut machine that doesn't need to be plugged in, I highly recommend the new Gina K Designs Intercut Die Cut Machine. Now, this one is out of stock right now, but you could always ask for a gift card and get it when it is back in stock. This is an adjustable machine. I had never used an adjustable machine before, and I'm quite impressed. The nice thing about this machine is you don't have to have a bunch of plates to figure out what sandwiches you need to do for different techniques. You just turn the dials. So this one will allow you to die cut, it'll allow you to use embossing folders, it'll allow you to make an impression with a die, you can foil with this, and you can use the better press system with this. And there is another dial that allows you to uh, control how much pressure the machine gives, depending if you have like an intricate die or so on. Now, I did a complete video on this showing all the things that it can do, and I'll link to that below. I just wanted to briefly mention it here. Now the handle removes easily for easy travel and when you pull the sides down, you can actually open those up and store tools inside. And when you pull those sides down, it suctions onto your work surface if you're working on something like glass and it won't move. So with this machine, you just really have two plates that you would mostly need. And with those plates, you can do all the different things by changing that little dial. So there's no need to remember what sandwich to use for various techniques. So when I use this, I put my cardstock on the gray cutting mat. I put my die on top of that. Then I put the white platform on top and then run that through my machine. Because these plates are very thick, I find that I don't get warping with them. This is just a quick look at this machine. There are many other perks this machine has. Be sure to check out that other video. I really like it. You'll see me use it a lot in videos. I still also like the Spellbinders Platinum. That's also a great machine. Both allow you to do great manual die cutting. Now let's move on to the next item on my crafty gift guide, and that is definitely the Spellbinders Better Press System. I love this tool, and I do believe it'll take a bigger role in card making in the years to come. With this tool, you can get a faux letterpress look that has amazing detail. I'm going to show you it briefly here, but I do have a more complete video on the system and the many things you can do with it linked below in my description. I put one of the press plates onto the gray magnetic surface of the better press. Then on the clear platform here, I'm temporarily adhering a piece of, car of cardstock. Now I can ink up that press plate. Now there are different inks that you can use. I found any dye ink will work great here. For this particular example, I thought I'd do a mix of colors. The best thing about these press plates is you can get these detailed faux letter press results, but you can also use these press plates on your Glimmer Hot Foil Machine and get really detailed, excellent foiling results. I demonstrate that in the other video. But here I'm going to take that clear platform and put it on top and you can see it kind of hovers over it thanks to the magnets in the system. Then you put it through your die cut machine. Here I'm putting it through the intercut but you could put it through other uh, die cut machines also. They have it listed over on their website and it presses that clear plate down pushing the press plate into the cardstock and leaving the ink behind. So you get this subtle letterpress look and beautiful, beautiful detail. I couldn't get detail like that with stamps, but I definitely can using these plates. And then you can also use these plates to foil. The reason I think this is a tool that will be used more and more in crafting is more and more companies are making press plates that work with the better press system. So there'll be lots of options out there. Okay, this brings me to my next item on the crafty gift guide, and that is the Gina K Fuse Foiling System. Now this sold out in record time, but more will be coming in stock. This is a laminating type machine that allows you to add foil to toner products. Now there are different ways to foil out there. I still love my Glimmer machine from Spellbinders. I use it a lot. It was on my crafty gift guide last year, and I would include it again this year. But this time I thought I would share with you about the Fuse. Basically, you take a toner sheet or a polyglaze sheet, which is a product Gina has, you put a piece of foil on it and you run it through and you can get effortless, beautiful foiled results. There are also many techniques that you can do and I have a complete video on this tool that I'll link to below. I'm just showing it briefly here. In fact, in that video, I show multiple ways to use this machine, not just for foiling. For example, here I use it to add flocking to an image. 
And you can use this as a laminator. So I create my own dividers for my stamps and dies by laminating cardstock pieces. And I can use the fuse tool to create those laminated dividers. Now this brings me to another item on my crafty gift guide list, and that is the Gina K Polyglaze. Now Gina has polyglaze sheets with lots of different patterns, and when you put foil on the polyglaze sheet and you run it through the fuse, you get foiled patterns like the snowflake one you see there. Well, now Gina has full sheet polyglaze. That means the entire surface of it is white, but you can foil it. And this is allows you to use your negative leftover foil that normally would go to waste. So you can see how I get two pieces here. One is the reverse of the other. I did a whole live video with Gina on these polyglaze pieces. I encourage you to watch that, that's linked below. But just know that there are many ways you can use a tool like this fuse foiling system in your craft room. Okay, let's change gears a bit and look at the next item on the crafty gift guide. And this would make an excellent gift. This is the Card Makers Chronicles. This book was designed by a fellow card maker and wonderful human named Pam. Pam put together this book and it contains everything you need to know and remember about card making. You have measurements for popular card sizes. You have a place where you can keep track of card making techniques that you like so that next time you lose your mojo, you can refer back to it for a little kickstart. It has places where you can keep track of everything from products you've ordered to your crafty passwords to addresses of your favorite card makers. You even have a place where you can keep track of virtual events and the different time zones they're in. It really has everything included. Then most of the book is dedicated to a place where you can keep sketches, ideas for color combos, and ideas that you plan to try in the future. So I had bought one of these and I started using it and I decided to buy a second one. That's the one you see here that I plan to give as a gift. It is just a great tool that makes crafting easier. Oh, and the best part, the outside is left black and white so I can color this with whatever colors I want. I plan to use my Olo or Copic markers and give it some blues and greens. Okay, let's look at some smaller ideas on my crafty gift guide. One of these was on my list last year, but I think it's worth including again. And I recommend having some sort of pickup tool. Now this is the Simon Says Stamp Place and Pierce Embellishment Wand. One end has a little sticky tip and one end has a piercing tool. I find this tool very helpful in picking up small little embellishments like gems or pearls or tiny little die cuts and placing them exactly where you want. Another option is the Gina K pick and stick tool. This one has a wax tip instead of that tiny little sticky ball tip and again a piercing end. Now these you want to be gentle with. This isn't something you want to press firmly with because like the wax tip is very delicate. But all you have to do is gently touch it to a small die cut or embellishment and you can move it anywhere you want and use the piercing end to really press it into place. I use these tools on every card I make. Another tool that I use quite often with card making is a tea ruler. Now I used a bigger tea ruler for many years, but I like the smaller size. It's perfect for making cards. It's six inches long and it allows you to find the center point or straight line on a card. I also like that this one was designed by a card maker, so it has marks for popular measurements with card making, such as the measurements for an A2 card, slimline, and more, and they even have those measurements written on the top T portion. There is a longer version of this available, but I find the smaller size handy for card making. If you are someone who likes to create patterns with your stamps or die cuts, or you struggle with keeping things straight like I do, a T ruler is very helpful. Next, I wanted to share a few blending brushes I recommend. Now, keep in mind, there are a lot of excellent quality blending brushes out there. The blending brushes these small stamp companies bring to us are ones that they've tried and tested with ink and they know will hold up. So there are a lot of great options, but I thought I'd share with you the three that I have been reaching for most lately. Now, I'm gonna demonstrate with this adorable mushroom layering stencil from Altenew. I'm not actually gonna do all of the layers, I'm just demonstrating these different tools. 
Now first we have the Altenew Large Ink Blending Brush. That's that big one here. I use this when I want to cover a large area. So for this stencil, I want everything to be the same color. So I'm choosing to use the larger brush. I also use these brushes when I want to do an ink blended background. I find when you're covering a bigger surface, the bigger brush is definitely handy and it allows for better blending. So if you like to ink blend backgrounds, that large brush is definitely a great tool to have. Now, I also do recommend having smaller brushes so that you can do selective inking. So you can get the ink just where you want it. After many years of using brushes, I find that for the smaller brushes, I like those that have shorter bristles. I find that you get more control over where the ink goes. And I have mostly been using these Altenew mini ink blending brushes. I have this container in the drawer next to me. I actually just spilled them all out when I got this out of the drawer. Usually they're in rainbow order, but it allows me to grab a, a brush when I need it and quickly add ink in a controlled way. So if I were to use a bigger brush it would be hard to get into these tiny nooks and crannies. I do recommend having a brush for each color family such as a brush for reds and a brush for greens and so on. And honestly I've never cleaned my brushes. Now there is a newer type of brush that I've been using off screen for a few weeks now and I'm thrilled with them and I'll be using them in future videos. These are the Waffle Flower Double Ended Blending Brushes. These are great for getting into small areas and it's nice because there's a brush end on both ends so you can have less brushes, do a different color family on each end if you want to. Or you can do what I did. I have a brush for each color family and I use one end for a dark uh, shade of that color and one end for a light shade of that color. And even better, these brushes have a great price point and are very high quality. Now, if you have brushes that you're happy with, definitely stick with that. It's just nice when companies give us different options so that if we're looking for a particular tool, we can look for the one that best fits our needs. Now sometimes I'll have a stencil that has very delicate parts to it. And when I go to use a blending brush and I do kind of a swirling motion, those little delicate parts might move a bit. An example of a stencil like that is this one from Altenew Golden Days stencil set. This is a beautiful layering set. I'm gonna take one of those stencils out and you can see it has very delicate areas there at the center of the flower. In this case, I like to use a dauber. This is a dauber wand that has a foam tip to it, a rounded foam tip. You do not do a kind of swirling motion with this, like a back and forth motion. Instead, you do kind of a bouncing or pouncing motion, and you just pounce that ink over the stencil opening. The reason I like this particular dauber wand is that the foam end is round, but it's kind of tight. It's not super wobbly. So I find it's easier to control and very durable. And it has two ends to it, and it comes with replacement foams. So I bought a few of these wands, and I have one for each color family, and I just find it's a great way to add ink over a stencil. You can also create dots with it, but you do want to stick to that up and down motion. It really gives great results, and I think it's a great tool to add to your arsenal if you do a lot of stenciling. After testing these for some time off screen, I definitely will be using them in my future videos. By the way, I do believe these dauber wands have two different tips available. One has a little bit of a point to it, but I prefer the rounded one. So with all of this talk of inking, I feel like I should include a couple things on my crafty gift guide list that have to do with cleaning up, but not a lot of cleaning, just simple cleaning. I highly recommend these cleaning cloths that I use in all of my videos. They're small, they're soft, they wash easily, and I use them every time I craft. Here I'm cleaning my stencils with that dry cloth and a quick spray of rubbing alcohol. Now if I need to clean my stamps, I use the Hero Arts Scrubber Block and Ultra Clean Spray. I've had this on my crafty gift guide in the past and it's definitely worth sharing again. The scrubber is actually a wood mount stamp block, so it's nice and comfortable. And it has this soft scrubbing portion that you can remove, it's Velcroed on. I just remove it off every few weeks, run it under my sink, under the water to clean off some of that excess ink and put it back on. But there are replacement scrubber pieces available. I just use the same one over and over. So here I'm cleaning the door of my Misty stamping tool that has ink on it. So I spray it with that ultra clean and then I use the scrub block. And then I usually use a damp cloth to wipe that clean. 
I use the same spray and scrubber block to clean my cling and clear stamps, it's safe for both, and any time I need to remove ink from a surface. The next item on my crafty gift guide is inexpensive, but definitely a handy tool to have. This is the Simon Hurley Paste Tool Set. Now I'll demonstrate here with a Concord and Ninth stencil and some Simon Hurley Lunar Paste. Now the Simon Hurley Lunar Paste and Solar Paste are wonderful. I actually have those on my crafty gift guide too. The Solar Paste have nice shine to them. The Lunar Paste have like an iridescent shine to them. I'm using a Lunar Paste here. I used the palette knife to put some of that paste over my stencil and now I'm using this bigger scraper to scrape it smooth. So you can easily apply paste over a stencil and get smooth results. Let's give that a few minutes to dry and when we come back look at this beautiful iridescent result. It changes color in the lights and depending on what color cardstock you use. Again that's the Simon Hurley Lunar Paste. Beautiful. And I used his paste tools to make sure it went on nice and smooth. Oh, and by the way, I used that scraper to also scrape up any adhesive or gunk that builds up on my glasswork surface. Now, if you watch my videos, you will not be surprised to see these products included on my crafty gift guide. I am a big fan of Gina K Connect liquid adhesive. Now it comes in a small bottle or the large bottle that you see here. What I do is I put the adhesive that's in the large bottle into the fine tip bottles and I use those on every card I make. I also like to use the My Sweet Petunia glue press. That's the tool that you see here. It has a little red surface in there that the nozzle lays onto, so you don't need to put the cap back on it. If it's resting on that little red piece in the stand, it won't get clogged. The glue press comes with a bottle full of glue and there's an empty bottle. In the empty bottle, I put my Gina K Connect because that's my preferred adhesive. And there are two different tips you can use, a fine tip or a little bit bigger tip. And this uh, has a really great squeeze action. If you're somebody who has trouble squeezing small bottles, this is a great option for you. So I use this one and the fine tip bottle. It really just depends on what I'm crafting. But regardless, I like using liquid adhesive for a few reasons. First, it gives you the wiggle room time. Second, it's more cost effective. And third, the Gina K Connect liquid adhesive is super strong and I trust it. I trust that it'll hold everything on my card as it, these cards go through the mail or get handled. If you want a closer look at these two different systems for glue, I have a video linked below that goes into deep detail. The next item on my list is definitely a great crafty gift. It is the Share Handmade Kindness Paperweight. There are two sizes here. The one on the right is made of crystal, so it's heavier. The one on the left is made of acrylic. It's about the same weight, but bigger. These are great to put on your card as you're waiting for things to dry or to remove any kind of warping. I find them very handy. Keep in mind you can use any kind of paperweight, but these are special because it has that share handmade kindness message on it. I gave permission to my friend Jossie to use the handmade kindness logo and she makes these in her home by hand. So I'm just supporting another female business owner and I really like the quality of the products that she makes. I do feel this is very helpful if you like to use liquid adhesive as I do, and it is a tool that you see me use in every video that I make. Now on to other adhesives. I thought I'd talk about foam adhesive for a bit. I don't use a lot of foam adhesive. I generally like to stack scraps of cardstock for dimension or stack die cuts for dimension, but sometimes you need a good foam adhesive. And for some reason, I am really picky about the foam adhesive I use. I have tried everything out there, and I've narrowed it down to a few favorites I wanted to share with you. The first are the Gina K Shaker Strips. These are narrow, but nice and thick. You can kind of curve them if you want to, and they are fantastic for shaker windows. The release paper is very easy to remove, which is important to me. It comes right off, and you can cut this without getting your scissors all mucky, and you can tear it if you need to. I really like these. I think the quality is top notch. Another type of foam strip that I like is from Trinity Stamps. These are also high quality. The release paper is very easy to remove and you can see it's a little more narrow. So it's a nice option if you're creating a shaker window and you only have a thin space to put your foam strips. 
It's about the same thickness as the Gina K strips, but they're not as wide, so you can kind of turn them around tighter spaces. Both are great options. If you're looking for a big mama roll of wide foam adhesive, I recommend the product from Altenew. Now, I, again, don't use a lot of foam adhesive, so I've had this roll for quite some time, and I haven't made a big dent in it. But when I do need foam tape for any kind of particular technique, this is a great option. The release paper comes off easy, it cuts nicely, and it tears nicely. It's a great quality product, and I know many crafters like this brand, too. And I do feel I should mention, I know there are other foam adhesives out there that are off-brand that have a lower price point, but I have tried and bought many of them, and I find that they don't have as good of quality. They might be a little too sticky or hard to use or harden and yellow over time. And I know if I get these from a craft company that they've tested them, and I know they are good quality. Next, let's talk a little bit about some storage options. I've done many videos on how I store my stamps and dies, and I've done the same thing for years. However, there are some newer storage pouches that I like to organize my die cuts or projects that I'm working on, and I think they're very handy. These are from Altenew. There are two different sizes. They're super thick and they have a zipper top. I like to use these for projects I'm working on to keep die cuts together and really just keep myself organized. In fact, I'll have a video coming out in the new year that talks about how I prep all of these die cut sentiments and save them for my cards. I also really like the Hero Arts storage envelopes. They're also thick and they have a flap that tucks in. Great for keeping projects organized, but you can also use these for storing your stamps and dies. They sell these pockets also with magnetic sheets that can be inside or without them. It's nice to have the different options and I'll link to all of these below. Now, one of the questions I get asked most about are magnetic sheets that you can keep your dies on when you put them in a pocket for storage. And this is something I have struggled with for years because I don't want to use a super thick magnetic piece because it just takes up more room in storage when I put them all in a storage bin together. But you don't want to use something too thin because then it doesn't hold your dies on it. So I have tried so many different options and I've boiled down to these. I uh, have some that are already cut to four by six. They're bought that way. Or there are eight and a half by 11 sheets. And those you can cut in half or to whatever size you want. And this is what I use if I have a die set where I want all of them to be displayed nicely on a magnet and not fall to the bottom of a pocket. I don't always use these, but in some cases like with word dies, it's definitely handy to have. So these are nice because they're not too thick but they hold the dies in place and I can cut it with a trimmer to any size that I want. Another item on my crafty gift guide that is great for staying organized is the Simon Says Stamp zipper pouches. I've tried many zipper, zipper pouches over the years and these are very durable. There are different sizes, but I like the bigger size the best and they have different color zippers available so you can kind of keep track of your supplies based on the color. Now here's an example of how I use one. I have all of these little hanging baskets I made a while ago using the Honeybee Succulent Garden Builder die set and I have them ready to go to create sets of note cards to give as a gift. I also use these zipper bags for when I travel. I keep things in it. I use these for kids school projects. I use these for everything. Highly recommend them. Good quality and I love the colors available. Next up on my crafty gift guide is this condiment server tray. Yes, this is meant to have ice in the bottom and different condiments on top for appetizers or whatever, but I use it for crafting. This is a great tool to have on your desk to keep track of your little die cuts or your little dies as you're creating. This one was one that I took to a crafty retreat and I made a bunch of these little spellbinders ornaments. As I was creating, I kept the different die cuts and the different containers. When I was finished, I put them in here and I could easily move it around. I have another one of these right on my desk that's always there. And as I'm creating, I can throw my stamps or dies there so that I can clean them up when I'm done. And that way I won't lose anything on my desk. This is a great tray. You can close it. You can take those little trays out of it. Really great tool with a great price point, and it helps me to stay organized as I craft. 
Now, my favorite crafty things is coming soon, and I'll talk about lots of different stamps and dies that I like. However, there were a few I wanted to include in my crafty gift guide. The first is the Honey Bee Mini Messages stamp set. This stamp set is packed full of pretty much any sentiment you could use for any occasion. The style of these sentiments works with a variety of styles of cards, and they're tiny, so you can use them along with other bigger sentiments. You can even use these on the inside of cards. There are many sentiments in here that you can build together to make a longer sentiment. This is one of those stamp sets that you can reach for often. I actually have mine sitting in the front of my drawer so that I can reach for it often. This is a new one that I bought for my mother-in-law for Christmas, but I'm telling you, it's a great one for any card maker. Now a die set that made my crafty gift guide list is the Honey Bee Mini Messages Banner die set. Now this has banners of different sizes and some of them have a slightly rounded corner, some of them have a sharp corner, and some of them have a flag end. I like the different options and the different widths and this is a great way to create a sentiment strip. Now this happens to cut out the Mini Messages stamp set very nicely. You can look through it, line it up easily. However, I use these banner dies to cut out other sentiments from other stamp sets. Sentiment strips are great to add onto any card, and these dies give you a lot of options. In fact, I keep these dies out and use them anytime I have a scrap of cardstock. Before I throw it away, I use these dies to cut as many pieces as I can out of those scraps. I keep these little sentiment strips on hand. I can stamp on them or use them to build up dimension. Another die set on my crafty gift guide is the Altenew Timeless Sentiment die set. Now, I am a big fan of die cut sentiments because you can add them on top of anything on your card. And this year, this is a die set I've reached for often. I like the words included and that a shadow die is included. This has friend, love, you, hello, hugs, and thank you. I really like this style. In fact, I go ahead and die cut a bunch of these ahead of time and glue them together and stacking them up for dimension. And then I have them on hand and ready to go. And of course, I use those all to new storage pouches I showed you earlier to keep those organized. I have one more die set that I recommend for my crafty gift guide, and this is the Concord and Ninth Short and Sweet die set. Now you can see I've been doing a lot of die cutting assembly recently. This is still on my desk, actually. This set has lots of small greetings that are really easy to add anywhere on a card. We have XOXO, Miss You, Hugs, Hello, Love You, Oh, happy day, get well soon, thanks, congrats, here for you, and so sorry. And these, of course, include the shadow so that it's just something that you can add anywhere on a card. So both of these sentiment die sets have a different style to them, but between the two, you're really covered for any style of card that you would want to create. All right, let's look at some specialty cardstocks for our crafty gift guide. First up, we have glitter cardstock from Altenew. Now they have lots of different colored packs available, but I'm gonna share with you my favorites. First up, the Milky Way glitter paper. Now look at the beautiful colors included in here. The Moonstone is my favorite. It's a white glitter paper that doesn't have any color to it. Other white glitter papers that I've tried have like a little bit of iridescent color. This looks like sugar. It's just beautiful. So much sparkle to it, but without any color. I hope they come out with packs of just that. Also included in here is a silver, kind of a platinum, a navy, and a black. A great multi-pack. I also like their Dazzling Diamond, which is a nice, uh, I guess I, I would call a champagne color glitter. I feel like it can work with any color project you're working on. So it can work with warm colors or cool colors. Here you can see what it looks like in comparison with a traditional silver. Now this is available in the smaller pack or in eight and a half by 11 sheets. This is definitely the glitter cardstock that I reach for the most because it works with any other colors. Oh, and by the way, you can color it with your alcohol markers or alcohol inks. Now let's talk about black cardstock. I use black cardstocks a lot for my sentiment dies like the big hugs here. 
Sometimes I like to use regular black cardstock, but sometimes I like to have a little shine to it. And there are a few options. Now you don't need them all, but I thought I'd show you the difference between them. For the most shine, I've got the black glossy uh, cardstock from Memory Box. You can see there when I tilt it in the light, it has a lot of shine and I use this one quite a bit. Now, if you want a little less shine, you can use the Erin Lee Creative Black Glossy. That's what I used on the die cut that you see here. It still has shine to it, but not as much as the memory box. Here, I'll hold them up together. On the left is the memory box. On the right is the Erin Lee. Now, if you want even less shine, but a special finish, kind of a velvety looking finish, we have from Tonic the Velvet Black Cardstock. It has a really unique look to it, and here's a comparison between the three. By the way, all of these have a white core. It's white on the other side. So you can do fun techniques like using an embossing folder with them and then sanding off that black finish to reveal the white. Really great product. You can even make a note card from it and have white on the inside. Now, if you're looking for a solid black, super black cardstock without shine, I recommend that Tim Holtz Black Heavy Stock. It was on my crafty gift guide last year, and I still use it a lot to this day. So those are some options for black cardstock. I feel like black cardstock is a nice contrast on cards and something that I reach for often. I have one more paper option on my crafty gift guide, and that is the Memory Box 6x6 paper pads. I've been using these for a long time, and I find them very helpful, especially if you like to use layering dies and you want kind of like a dark, medium, and light of the same color to use together. Instead of searching through all of your card stocks, these paper pads are helpful. There are 48 sheets in a pad, and there are four of each color, and they're double-sided. They have a white core so you can do those fun embossing folder techniques, but it really has saved me time to use these because I can just grab three colors that go together well and use them with my layering dies. Now there are a bunch of different color pads available. These are just a few here, and I've used these many times in videos and I will continue to do so because the colors are absolutely beautiful. Next on my crafty gift guide, I have some really fun embossing powders from Hero Arts. I'm having a great time with these, and I think it just adds to the fun of embossing powder to have an iridescent effect. These iridescent bossy powders come in gold, copper, blue, and purple. Now on the black cardstock here, I have purple, blue, and gold. And on the white cardstock there, I have the blue. Look at the difference of the iridescent blue embossing powder on white cardstock and on black cardstock. It's really cool because it changes based on whatever color cardstock you use. And it changes when you tilt it in the light, giving really fun effects. I've used these in classes before and I'll be using them in a video very soon. I really like these for creating fun backgrounds and adding interest to a card. I really wish you could see the fun color in real life. All right, next up is another shiny product that I have used a lot this year and I highly recommend. That is the Tim Holtz Distress Mica Stain Spray. Now these are available in lots of different colors and when you spray these on cardstock, you get beautiful color and lots of shimmer. Now I'm gonna uh, spray the same on white cardstock and black cardstock to show you that these work great on colored backgrounds too. Not all sprays work great on colored backgrounds, the color gets lost. But with these, the mica has the color in it. So it sits on top of the cardstock and really shows the color. Now you don't need a lot of this, just a couple sprays will, will do everything for you and then you can also add water to it to kind of make it spread more. So on this black one I'm going to add some mists of water and you can see how it'll move more. Now if you aren't big into sprays, no worries, you can also dip a brush in there and use these to get like a metallic shimmery watercolor, even on black cardstock it gives beautiful results. I really like the quality of these, the color of these, and that a little goes a long way. It makes for a really fun, quick background, and I've done many videos with them. I'll link to a couple of them below. Let's look at some accessories on my crafty gift guide list. First, we have the DMC Diamant Grand 
metallic thread. That's a mouthful. Uh, these are different than the original Diamant, which is thinner. These are a little bit thicker, and I think they're great, great for card making. Now, you can use these to stitch with stitching dies, which I do often, but I also like to create little bows with them to add to my card. The nice thing is, is it adds some sparkle, but it doesn't add a lot of bulk. If you want your bow to be bigger, you can double up a couple of the threads of it and use that instead. I just do a little drop of Gina K Connect, use some reverse tweezers to hold it in place, and it's a great little accessory to add to any card. You'll see me use these in many videos in the future. I'm crazy about this thicker version of this great metallic thread. Next up, we have a unique product on my list. This is from Crafty Meraki, and these are called the Effortless Artistry Paper Pads. Now, in these pads are a bunch of pre-colored images. If you struggle with coloring like I do, or you don't want to take the time to color, these are for you. So in the pad, you can see lots of different coloring options. The nice thing is it, there are dyes available to cut these out. And there are stamp sets that coordinate, so you can either stamp and color on your own and die cut them, or you could get these and die cut them. There are a variety of these pads available. I just have a few here to show you. And I love how well these are colored. So some true coloring artists colored these, and I can easily add them to my cards. There are also some pads that I think just have sentiments too, and then there are the coordinating dies to cut them out. I like that lots are included, and there's a variety of coloring styles. Some of these are even no-line coloring, which I never try to do. So this gives me the opportunity to add that look to my card without the effort. Another really fun product on my crafty gift guide list are the shaker covers from Waffle Flower. Now these come in lots of different shapes. We have circles, trees, stars, hearts, and more. And some of them have like a bubble. You can see this one's kind of like a bubble for your shaker bits. And some are a little bit flatter. But there are dies available to cut the shape to go around it. So these make shaker windows really easy to do. No need for foam tape. You just put some double-sided tape to seal around the base of it and put your cardstock die cut around it. Now there's a card that I made up there, the congrats card that I plan to give to one of Lila's friends. I use these a lot for birthday and celebration cards. I'm impressed with how strong these little shaker covers are and how easy they are to use. And I will link below to a video showing just how to use them on a card. Before I move on, I wanted to show you two little projects here. This one, I put two of them back to back to make a little shaker globe for an ornament. I haven't finished it yet. I need to cut those corners off and such, but they're fun to use back to back to make a tag or ornament. And then the card there, I actually put that on a penny to make it spin. And that's a little shaker window that spins on my card. So it's really fun the different ways you can use these shaker covers. Another product that I've enjoyed using this year are the Hero Arts Transfers. These are rub-ons in high quality, lots of different colors, beautiful images, whites and blacks that you can easily add onto your card. Now I did a live video a few weeks ago where I showed some fun techniques that you can do with these. I will link to that below. But I love that these rub-on transfers are making a comeback and Hero Arts has lots of great options. So these are easy to use. You just peel the release paper off the back of the rub-on, place it on your card wherever you want, then use a bone folder to rub that in place, or you can put it in your die cut machine between the cutting plates and run it through to get the pressure. Then remove the clear sheet and you have a beautiful transfer of that image. I really like the white ones because you can do bright white on cardstock with a smooth finish. Oh, and I also like the realistic ones, like the butterflies over there. I would never be able to color an image that well. Now for a totally random gift idea for a card maker, I am crazy about this little envelope necklace that I found on Etsy. I have actually given this necklace to several of my friends. It's inexpensive. It comes in silver. It comes in gold in different lengths. I love the simplicity of it. It's just a little envelope with a heart at the center. And I guarantee any card maker would love this necklace. 
Now, there are a few bigger items I wanted to include on my list, and the first is the Spellbinders Club subscription. Now, this is a subscription program where each month you get different products. The cool thing about Spellbinders is they have a bunch of different options. So they have everything from embossing folders to small dies to large dies to stitching dies and more. Each month you get something new and you can skip months if you want to. It is incredibly affordable. It's a very good value. And my favorite of all of their different options is the Deluxe Caboodle. It's 60% savings. So for only $120 a month, you get three die sets, two embossing folders that are big, a wax seal kit, a hot foil kit, a better press plate, a stencil, a stamp and coordinating die, and a bonus item. They do have some other perks that are really worth it. Spellbinders is one of my favorite companies, and of all the different subscription programs out there, this is one that I seem to go back to often. I will link below to a video that describes how these clubs work so you can check it out for more information. Another item that I think makes an excellent gift is a spot in a virtual event or retreat. First up, online card classes, which I own with my friend Christina, just had their Relax and Rewind Holiday 2023. This is a very affordable class that encourages you to use the supplies you have. We revisit 12 different techniques, and at the end you have pieces to create 12 different projects. Now, this live event happened a few weeks ago. However, you can still get access to the class and be able to watch and create along with it. It is definitely worth it. We had such fun and the techniques are definitely timeless and ones you can go back to often. There are some upcoming virtual events that I recommend. First up, Pink Fresh Studio has their very popular Create and Connect events, and one is coming up in February, and I'm very excited to be one of the teachers. These events are fun because you get the products sent to you, and you can create lots of different projects with six different teachers. I find the community building is fun, and these are very easy to follow. They also have lots of make and take videos and ideas so you can really stretch the supplies you get as part of the event. I will say the value of this class is great. The supplies, they're very, very generous with what they include. And I'm really excited about the products in this particular upcoming event. They are fantastic. Another event that I'm very excited to be a part of is the up upcoming all to new March Mindfulness Retreat. Now this retreat is great because there's a great variety of products included. So you get a variety of techniques and styles from the class. There are six different teachers and lots included. I really like that Altenew focuses on the mindfulness of crafting, that it's a great escape from our busy day to day and any challenges we have, and really focuses on learning techniques that you can use anytime you lose your crafty mojo. Oh, and by the way, all of the products that you use, like the stamps, dies, and stencils and such are included in the retreat. If you're looking for a crafty weekend where you use supplies that you have, I recommend the Hero Arts Stamp Alongs. These are very affordable and they encourage you to use supplies you have on hand. The next Stamp Along is a mixed media theme. It's in January. I'm not teaching at this one, but I definitely will be taking the event and crafting along with you. However, they have many throughout the year and I encourage you to try any of them out. They are always very well done, very calm, and just a great way to find new friends and build community. Okay, so there you have it. A very long video. I'm sorry about that. With lots of crafty gift ideas. I hope that this is helpful to you and maybe making a decision about a product that you are considering or just getting a closer look at some of the great options out there. Remember in my description below, I have links to these products and also links to videos featuring these products, or you can go to my blog and find a lot more there. I thank you for watching. I hope you have a great holiday season and I'll see you soon.